Hi, I'm Beth, creator of Dry It Can It. I'm not an expert or a scientist, but I like to share with you what I've learned about dehydrating food, canning food, and sharing original recipes. Today, I want to introduce you to Madge. Madge is my new thingamajig that I use when I'm creating recipes. Not all of my recipes, but many of the recipes. This little thingamajig is called a data logger. And what it does, it allows me to place this inside of a jar when I'm pressure canning, and it measures minute by minute the temperature of the food inside the jar. And this particular size works really well for my pint jars or my quart size jars. And because I place it in the middle of the jar, it measures the temperature in the coldest spot. Why is that important and why do I do that? I am what many people will call a rebel canner. In other words, I don't go strictly by USDA guidelines. Many canners believe that the only safe canning practices are to follow all of the USDA guidelines. And the USDA guidelines were last updated for the most part, as far as I know, in 2015. And they say many foods are not safe to can. Now, it's not that they say that they're not safe to can, they're just not an approved list. I should clarify that because they haven't been tested. And the concern, of course, is botulism in canning food. And I think safe canning practices are really important. Safe canning practices mean starting with, with good food, good quality food, not food that's partly molded or partly blemished, making sure that all of your equipment is clean, making sure that your jars are clean. You know, all of these things contribute to good canning practices. Not reusing your canning lids, making sure that you follow temperature guidelines, those are important. Botulism is a relatively rare, but potentially deadly thing that happens sometimes. And it's very rare, there are not a lot of cases. So what happens when you're canning, when you're pressure canning, your temperature more normally for boiling water, for example, if you're at sea level, is 212 degrees. When you're pressure canning, your, your temperatures get much higher than that, and they can only be reached with a pressure canner because the combination of the pressure plus the boiling water will bring the canner up to 240 degrees or more. When you get past 240 degrees, that's the temperature that will kill botulism. And your food may have botulism spores in it, and those actually are not harmful. So food we eat every day might have botulism spores in it, but our digestive systems, with the exception of, of babies or maybe children under the age of one, um, can handle that, and that's not a problem. The problem is when those spores produce a toxin, uh, the botulism toxin, which has a technical scientific name that I'm not gonna try and pronounce, that's what can be deadly. So when I test my recipes, I like to test them to make sure that I'm getting into that kill zone. Now for me, I'm above sea level, and for me, where I'm at, my boiling point for water is actually less than 212 degrees. And it's the same for the kill zone. My kill zone actually gets to be 237 degrees. Essentially, you can there's an inverse relationship in that the higher your altitude, the lower your boiling point of water or the lower even your kill zone is. And, and I believe that that uh, adjustment is about one degree for every 500 feet you are above sea level. But all of that aside, I do try really hard to follow safe canning practices. Now the USDA says things like um, all of your food, if you're thawing food from the freezer, should be done in the refrigerator. How many of us thaw food on the counter for the day? I do, have done so all my life. Um, they say eggs, should, when they're cooked, fried eggs in the morning, are only safe if they're hard yolks. No runny yolks, no soft yolks. Anybody in your family or maybe yourself like that little bit of a runny egg? I do. So I'm not saying that USDA canning guidelines aren't good to know and aren't good to follow, not at all. But I don't believe that every single thing that hasn't been tested is unsafe. And so sometimes you'll see recipes, for example, when I'm pressure canning a cake or something, then people will say, that's unsafe. Well, it's not proven to be unsafe, it just hasn't proven to be safe. 
And even this, if I get into the kill zone, does not guarantee that the food is going to be safe. Likewise, following USDA guidelines, the USDA isn't going to guarantee that your food is going to be safe. Getting the temperature up into the kill zone can be anywhere from maybe 10 minutes to 100 minutes, depending upon the size of the jar, depending upon the ingredients. There's so many different variables, and the USDA guidelines will push those out as far as the ingredient that takes the longest. So for example, if you're canning anything with meats that doesn't have a bone in, you're going to always be 75 minutes in a pint and you're gonna be 90 minutes in a quart, that's at sea level, temp, at sea level um, altitude. It might be a little bit less if you're above that, but it's an easy way to remember the guidelines. So I just wanted to let you know that I can't ever guarantee that anything you do is safe. And the USDA can't guarantee that either. There are so many variables within your kitchen, within your own practices, within the food that you use, within the canner that you use, within the procedures that you use. I think if you follow guidelines that are safe and practical and clean, for the most part, you're going to be okay. And most of the recipes that I do that are not in the guidelines, I'm going to use this to see that those temperatures get up there. That's why, for example, when I do cakes, the rage right now is to put the cake in the oven, bake it, put the cover on it, and people will say it seals because the pressure and the heat of the cold basically pulls that down. That's fine, it works for a lot of people and I don't know that anybody has gotten sick from that. I'm certainly not saying that's unsafe because I haven't tested that. But I do know that canning jars aren't meant for the oven, so I don't do that and I'm not comfortable. But I like the idea of a pressure canned cake. So I work with recipes, create recipes that I can pressure can so that it gets up into that zone that is comfortable. Likewise, the USDA says, and I will put a link below this video, that if you have items that are high acid or if you have items that are high sugar, those environments don't support botulism. So I think many times cakes, which have a lot of sweetener in them, which have sugars, etc., probably don't support botulism. Now I can't say that for sure because I don't know what that sugar level is. So I think that it's always important that you look at things in terms of what's safe for your family and what you're comfortable with. If you're a beginning canner, you probably should follow the USDA guidelines until you get really comfortable with how our things are working. I pressure can milk, for example. I like it, I have it, I've done it for over a year, it works really well. It's definitely not a USDA approved thing. They'll say milk, eggs, many things are not safe to pressure can. To my knowledge, they haven't been tested. Um, another big thing is when you're making uh, a stew, for example, uh, flour is not suggested to be canned because flour can interrupt with the, the heat content that can be in your jar. In other words, it's thicker, so it might slow down that heat element to get that temp temperature up to where it needs to be. Um, have I canned personally with flour? I haven't. I often will use sure gel, which is something that is a refined cornstarch that it can be used for fruit, and I'll use that. And that's not approved for meats, but it's approved for fruit, so why wouldn't it be approved for meat is kind of my thinking. So I just want you to be aware of how I come up with the recipes. I want you to be aware of safe canning practices. And I wanted to introduce you to Madge because from time to time I'll talk about Madge. Um, if you have questions about what you're doing and you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. I always say I am not an expert. I'm a homemaker who likes to share things. And I think you'll find many people actually um, back to grandmas or the Amish have done things that aren't quote unquote USDA approved. USDA approved means it's tested. And even if, even if my foods get up to that kill zone, I can't tell you for sure they're safe because when the USDA tests something, they test every single ingredient that's in it. So if you're doing a stew, they're gonna test the meat, they're gonna test the potatoes, they're gonna test the, the gravy even though it's made with sure gel, they're gonna test the carrots. I don't have the means to do that and I think most people don't do that. 
but I want you to be aware of, of what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. I want you to make sure that you're always using good quality food, that you're not using spoiled food, that you're not using food that might have been left on a counter for a long time that should be refrigerated. I want you to make sure that you're working with, with clean uh, jars and clean equipment and, and definitely make sure that you're following the directions on your pressure canner because every pressure canner manufacturer works just a little bit differently. Doesn't mean that one is better than the other, you just need to follow the directions on your pressure canner. So anyway, this is Madge, meet Madge. I'll talk about Madge from time to time. I hope that you'll sign up uh, and follow my channel because I work really hard to try and bring you original recipes and how to's and uh, I really appreciate your watching. So thank you for watching this and uh, look forward to uh, working with Madge more often.